Hello! Got high cholesterol and wondering how to bring it down? You are in the right place. Today, I'll talk about the 10 best foods to lower cholesterol and the 5 worst. Plus, I will explain the difference between bad cholesterol, LDL, and good cholesterol, HDL, what high cholesterol can cause, and what you can do beyond diet to keep it under control. So, make sure you watch until the end. But first, please hit that like button. Let's make this one one of the most liked videos on the channel. Help me out and share this with your friends and family. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. According to the CDC, it causes about 928,000 deaths every year. That's roughly one death every 34 seconds. Cholesterol is deeply connected with cardiovascular disease. It's a modifiable risk factor that can dramatically change your risk of having a heart attack or stroke if you bring it down to the safe zone. That's why this video is so important. And tell me, do you have high cholesterol? Have you ever had a heart attack or a stroke? What part of the US or the world are you watching from? Write it down below. What is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a wax-like substance. It isn't necessarily bad because your body needs it to build cell membranes and to produce vitamins like vitamin D, hormones and substances that help digest fatty foods. But too much cholesterol can become a problem. Where does cholesterol come from? Cholesterol comes from two sources. The main source is your liver. Yes, your liver produces about 70 to 80% of the circulating cholesterol. The rest comes from your diet, from the foods you eat. That's why you may know slim people who only eat healthy stuff, yet they have high cholesterol. It's genetics that can make your cholesterol stay high. Why is it important to know your cholesterol level? Simply because the higher your blood cholesterol, the greater your risk of cardiovascular diseases like heart attack and stroke. That's why getting a blood test to check your cholesterol is so important. What types of cholesterol are there? The two main types are LDL cholesterol, the bad one, and the HDL cholesterol, the good one. LDL cholesterol deposits cholesterol throughout your body. With high LDL, you can accumulate fat in your blood vessels that gradually grows, narrowing the blood flow throughout your arteries. Sometimes these deposits rupture suddenly and form a clot that causes a heart attack or a stroke. HDL cholesterol, on the other hand, collects LDL cholesterol from your arteries and bring it back to the liver to clear out. That's why HDL cholesterol is called the good cholesterol. If you have very high LDL, the bad one, and very low HDL, the good one, you increase the risk of cholesterol slowly building up on the inner walls of the arteries, forming atherosclerosis. What is a normal cholesterol level? According to the American Heart Association and the CDC guidelines, HDL cholesterol greater than 40 mg per deciliter in men and 50 mg per deciliter in women. Total cholesterol desirable level is below 200 mg and LDL cholesterol depends on your individual risk profile. For healthy adults, below 100 milligrams is optimal. For those with high risk factors, smoking, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, below 70 is the goal. For very high risk patients, those who already had a heart attack, stroke, or stent placement, the goal is below 55 milligrams per deciliter. If you have a stent and you are bragging your LDL cholesterol is 90, know that you might not be in the safe range. So you have high cholesterol. What can you do naturally to improve it? There are three things you can tackle without 
necessarily using medication. One, lose weight. Two, exercise. And three, improve your diet. Why does weight loss improve cholesterol? As I said, the liver produces almost 80% of the circulating cholesterol. Excess weight can overload the liver, so it produces more bad cholesterol and fails to clear excess cholesterol. Around 60 to 70% of obese people have high cholesterol. And the location of fat matters too. If you have visceral obesity around the belly, your chance of high cholesterol is much greater. Whereas fat on the legs is a lower risk. Losing just 5 to 10% of your body weight can significantly reduce your LDL levels and even a 1 to 3% weight reduction can improve your HDL levels. So, if you are overweight, start losing weight. And exercise. Physical exercise can increase your HDL, the good cholesterol, and reduce your LDL. It also helps you lose weight, reduce fat in the liver, and shift where fat is stored. Both aerobic activities, walking, running, swimming, cycling, and resistance training improve your cholesterol levels. How much exercise? 150 minutes per week is enough. And diet, what can you do diet-wise to improve it? This is the main subject of today's video. Diet is extremely important. Some foods we should add, others we need to remove. Which foods should you introduce in your diet? Primarily three things. Soluble fiber binds to cholesterol in the digestive system and prevents it entering the bloodstream. Two, polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats directly reduce LDL cholesterol. And three, phytosterols block cholesterol absorption by the body. What foods should you add? Here are the 10 best foods. Number one, oats. Eating just one and a half cups of cooked oats per day can reduce cholesterol by five to eight percent. Oats contain both soluble and insoluble fibers. Another benefit, fiber helps you feel full and improves your bowel regularity. Number two, eggplant. I'm not talking about eggplant plus orange juice or eggplant water. We know that doesn't work, but eggplant is a low calorie vegetable, rich in soluble fiber that can reduce your cholesterol when part of a healthy diet. Don't take eggplant capsules. That's not the point. Number three, beans. Beans are rich in soluble fiber. They also take longer to digest, meaning you feel fuller for longer after a meal. If you dislike beans, chickpeas, lentils, peas have the same benefit. Eating three fourths cup can reduce LDL by about 5%. Just don't count on bean stew, which has a lot of fat and sodium. Number four, okra. That slimy substance in okra, that's called mucilage. And it can bind cholesterol during digestion, making it more likely to be excreted rather than absorbed. Number five, chia seeds. Chia is packed with nutrients, including omega-3, iron, calcium, and antioxidants, along with high fiber and mucilage like okra. A 2021 review of 10 clinical trials found chia seed increased HDL and decreased LDL. Number six, flaxseed. Some studies suggest that the alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, in flaxseed and flaxseed oil may benefit people with heart disease, lowering high blood pressure, reducing LDL cholesterol, and lowering blood sugar. Flaxseed is also rich in phytosterols and block cholesterol absorption. Number seven, olive oil. Olive oil is rich in monounsaturated fatty acids. If you replace saturated fats with monounsaturated fats, you reduce LDL cholesterol. Plus, olive oil has antioxidants and 
anti-inflammatory properties. Observational studies show links to lower risk of cardiovascular disease, some cancers, even dementia in people who consume more olive oil than those who use little or none. Number eight, omega-3 rich fish. Which ones? Cold water fish like salmon, tuna, sardines, mackerel. These fishes eat phytoplankton that contain omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 increases HDL cholesterol and can reduce triglycerides and has antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and vasodilatory effects. And studies show it reduces sudden death. So include this fish in your diet. Number nine, some fruits like apples, citrus fruits and avocado. Both apples and citrus fruits, oranges, tangerine, lemon, contain pectin, a type of soluble fiber that lowers LDL cholesterol. Avocado is rich in monounsaturated fat. Research suggests adding avocado helps improve LDL levels in overweight or obese people. And number 10, nuts and almonds. Almond, walnuts, and nuts in general can improve blood cholesterol. Basically, all nuts are good. They are rich in vitamins, minerals, and monounsaturated fat, which can reduce cholesterol. But we must remember nuts are high calorie, so don't overdo it. And what should you reduce or remove from your diet? Three things, refined carbohydrates, trans fats, and saturated fats. So the first thing you should take out of your diet, coconut oil. Coconut oil is about 85% saturated fat and it raises cholesterol a lot. It doesn't prevent Alzheimer's, no study has proven that, and is also expensive. Avoid coconut oil, swap for olive oil, simple as that. Number two, processed meats, bacon, sausages, hot dogs, salami, these have high sodium, low nutrition, and are potentially carcinogenic, especially stomach and colorectal cancer, due to their nitrite content. Plus, they increase cholesterol. Avoid them. Number three, fried foods, chicken nuggets, wings, onion rings. They are among the worst when it comes to cholesterol. Number four, bakery products, cookies, Cakes and pastries are usually made with large amount of butter and fat, making them high in cholesterol. Also, processed carbs will increase your liver fat and make you gain weight, which worsens cholesterol. Number five, full fat dairy. Whole milk, butter, cheeses, whole yogurt, they are rich in saturated fat. Swap for skim milk, low fat yogurt, and reduce butter. And what about eggs? If you don't overdo them, eggs will not raise your cholesterol. Relax. But you are doing everything right. Your cholesterol is still high. What's next? Talk to your doctor. He or she will tell you if you need medication. If you have atherosclerosis or LDL is extremely high above 190 milligrams per deciliter or if you have very high cardiovascular risk there are four major medications for cholesterol out there statins semvastatin rosuvastatin ethervastatin pitavastatin etc they act in the liver not just reducing cholesterol levels but also stabilizing plaques so they don't rupture lowering your chance of a heart attack and stroke. But don't statins increase the risk of dementia? Newer studies from 2025 say the opposite. They reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and also Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. That study had about 7 million participants. So. That's a major study. No other study was bigger than that. And what about cancer? 
in breast cancer, most studies suggest statin reduce mortality by up to 43%. That's huge. And this reduction is mainly for lipophilic statins, artrovestatin, pitavestatin, and simvestatin. Another important medication is ezetimibe. Ezetimibe reduces cholesterol absorption in the intestine. On its own, it's modest, but when combined with a statin, the result is impressive. You block production in the liver and absorption in the gut, giving powerful effect. And the third major class are the PCSK9 inhibitors. In 2006, they discovered that people with defects in the gene for PCSK9 had very low cholesterol and less heart attack and fewer cardiovascular deaths. PCSK9 is an enzyme that attaches to LDL receptors, preventing bad cholesterol from being removed. Sometimes, even if you've turned off the hot water tap, statins, and the cold water tap, ezetimibe, the bathtub is still about to overflow. You have to unclog the drain. That's why we use PCSK9 inhibitors. There are now two types. The older ones that are injectable every two weeks and a newer one called Inclisiran Cibrava, which you only take every six months. Much more convenient. These meds are expensive and are rarely needed because in most cases we succeed with statins plus ezetimibe. But it's good to know we have that option. And there is a fourth option, bampedoic acid. This medication acts directly in the liver to reduce cholesterol production, similar to statins, but without causing muscle pain, which is great for people who can't tolerate statin. It's often combined with azetamide for even better results. Important things to remember, high LDL and low HDL are indeed major risk factors for heart attack and stroke. High cholesterol increases the risk of some type of cancer, colon, rectal, prostate, breast and testicular cancers. And lipophilic statins may reduce breast cancer recurrence and mortality. Do your part to lower cholesterol naturally. Lose weight, exercise, eat right. But if in your case you don't get the desired effects, no panic. If your doctor prescribes medication, take the medication, listen to your body. And if you have side effects, report them. The important thing is your health and well being. Did you like the video? Do you now understand more about cholesterol? Hope yes. And which is the next video you watch? I'll leave two suggestions here on the side. The 10 best foods for diabetics and the five you should avoid. And the seven signs your heart is in trouble. My name is Andrew Wambier, I'm a cardiologist and this is Dr. Dre Health Tips. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.